Now, I have been working on a music video, and I also uh, have a testimony about uh, another song that I started uh, just a couple weeks ago, that I'll be sharing that as well. And so, while I was having my plans as a person doing music, music video and, and working on a new song, the hurricane happened. So that's why instead of having my music video right now, I am interjecting these videos about the hurricane. Now that it's hurricane season, I want to refresh on how I have effectively used decrees to have protection from the Lord from the hurricanes for both myself and my uh, family members. And this time we were dealing with Idalia, and that's no different. What took place. Now, I want to make this a two-parter. In this first video, I want to share a little bit of history, like when I first was discovering the power of prayer for hurricane protection on a house. And I'm going to start it with a, a history of back, back in 2005, how during Hurricane Wilma, I hadn't known how to use decrees, but I had had a lifetime of having answers to my prayers from the Lord. And so, in my own way, I had uh, used the power of prayer to have a miracle protection from God. And I wanted to share briefly that as the first part, because I, I had discovered my husband, the photos he had taken back then in 2005, my husband is no longer alive. He actually passed away three years after then in 2008. But I discovered that I still had on uh, my hard drive now this little story that he had told about it. And that gives a testimony of how the power of the hurricane then, how we had had no protection as I related, yet our house was the only house that remained without any damage whatsoever where all of the rest of the houses had loose roofing and everything that had to be fixed. And the photographs also he took to show how our house had withstood it. So I'm going to start with that one first. And then in the next video I will share how I used decrees and how and showing how I used it in Idalia and the miracle um, that the Lord then worked for both myself and for family members. And uh, I'm going to explain in depth there how I'm going to share the decree that I use because I use a template by now because it's it's a routine. I have the routine down with the with the decree and the scriptural decree, and I want to share that because since we're in hurricane seasons and it's not just hurricanes, this applies to all kinds of situations. Since then, I have applied it to all kinds of situations. How you use decree, but. Particularly, the Lord has had me learn about decrees, how effective they are through hurricanes. You know that we often can find ourselves in situations where we can't do what's the best thing to do. We simply can't do for a variety of reasons. And there has been more than one time where I have found myself unable to... Uh, to do whatever protection everybody else can do at the time when a hurricane's approaching. I remember when I used to live over in Pembroke Pines when my husband was alive. We didn't have any shutters on our house. We couldn't afford them at the time. We had just uh, bought the house and there was no shutters on it. Everyone else in the entire neighborhood had shutters and when the storm came, everyone shuttered up their windows and we were the only ones sitting in the block with our windows exposed and not because we didn't want to we couldn't do it and at the time my husband also was um, not doing well in his health and he didn't have the ability to go around and board up windows so at the time what I did is I just prayed over the windows and I prayed over the house and I lifted it to the Lord well, when the hurricane passed over, every single house on the block had had damage. They had lost tiles to the roof. Trees had been ripped down. They had had damages to even to uh, their boarded up windows, except 
for our house. Not one shingle was gone from the roof. Two palm trees had snapped and had come like spears toward our house, but had stopped about five feet away from the windows and just were on the ground. And, she, you know, it's just a testimony about the power of the Lord. At that time, I had not been a born-again Christian, but I had been, I had always been a believer of Jesus. At that time, I didn't know about decrees. However, I did know about the power of prayer. Out of necessity, out of not having the ability to do what's right according to um, what uh, the um, authorities tell us to do. I had had to lean on God. I had had to turn on God. And through that, I saw the power of prayer. I, I came to know that the real protection to to have the most valuable thing was to have a, a space in place where God hears your voice and you lift it to him because all those people on the block it was it was a, a, a middle upper class everybody had money to take care of their homes but all that money and all that proper protection upon their houses not one had been spared from damage to their house, except my house. Hurricanes pretty much can pass relatively swiftly as far as a, uh, a disaster is concerned. It, it's a matter of hours when it's over. And so when it, the hurricane's actually approaching, I've never been asleep. To me, it's like being a, asleep when an enemy is going to attack. So you just... I've always had the habit not to sleep. So this was no different. Uh, my husband had gone to bed. We had separate bedrooms. And mine was on the opposite end of the house. I actually had the, the larger master bedroom. And I'm showing here's a, a picture of our house that he had. He took up, my husband took all these pictures. And he had, uh, he had been a poet, actually. A uh, published poet. And uh, so he gets a little bit... Uh, poetic here in some ways, but uh, he had said, uh, Vivian and I had been tracking Hurricane Wilma for days as we always had watching any hurricane's path whenever it headed toward Florida. We felt some relief as the storm skirted Key West to the south of us. We already had one hurricane this year when Katrina crossed South Florida. We suffered little damage from that storm. I felt we probably wouldn't have another storm this hurricane season. We watched the news intently, hoping Wilma would die down or move off into the Gulf of Mexico and not turn around and head back to South Florida. I went to sleep that night while Vivian stayed up the entire night not liking to sleep during hurricanes. On the 24th of October, the storm barreled its way across South Florida and headed directly towards us. We did not have hurricane shutters and had to hope for the best. Well, that's his way to say it. He said he hoped for the best, but I was the one going around praying over all the windows. As you see, this was the front of our house, and this you this was our um, picture window, and it was completely exposed, and we were in an area that, that had trees planted in front of every house. In fact, if you uh, were to cut down a tree, the city required you to plant a tree. So it was a place that, that had a lot of trees. But he hoped for the best, but like I said, I went praying around, and every window pane that you see here had on it written Jesus. <laughs> I went to, took a little white crown, I went writing, uh, writing Jesus on the windows and praying to the Lord about it. Throughout the early morning, the storm screamed louder and louder. The wind was tearing everything apart. Giant pine trees fell across the lake from us. Wilma made landfall as a powerful Category 3 hurricane 20 miles south of Naples at 6.30 a.m. Now all these pictures are actually pictures that were from our um, home at the time in the front. The storm pushed across the Everglades. It lost some power and became a Category 2 storm as it raced to the Atlantic Ocean. 
The wide eye of the storm passed only three miles north of Pembroke Pines. It caused extensive damage in the area between West Palm Beach and Miami. Key West also sustained excessive destruction. The roar of the hurricane stirred me about 6.30 a.m., and I rose, finding Vivian camped in the short hallway by the master bedroom and garage, the power out. The wind blowing from the west roared around the house to the east. One of my neighbor's trees had blown down in our front yard and snapped off two palm trees. Another neighbor's bischoffia tree fell across our backyard fence into our 40-foot-high mango tree, which stood fast with only a few broken branches. The front of the house photo shows small trees tilted at angles by the 100-mile-per-hour wind. The rain gutter had been torn from the roof. Fortunately, no windows cracked or broke. This rain gutter that you see right here was the only thing that got any kind of damage in any way, and it was literally itself had been shaky all the time. It was not attached very well. But this picture he had taken, see, you see this is a rain gutter. You can see this right here, these were rusted and old. And because we had bought this house and we hadn't really been able to do some uh, repairs on some of the things. And this itself, you can see these are kind of old. And uh, this is the only thing. This, it just, it didn't even tear off. Look at this. This is a 100 mile per hour wind. These are old rusted attachments that were loosely on it. Now, this is another testimony now. And this, as you saw, trees snapped and broke. But our gutter that could have gone wild in the wind and smashed our windows or gone flying off like the, the palm trees that had snapped stayed. Stayed only attached by this. Well, you know what? If I had to replay it and I could look into the supernatural, I think I might see an angel holding this down. Because there's no explanation how come the trees were snapped and broke and this, hanging by this, stayed. And, and it's to show more, this close-up photo shows the bent trees and damaged gutter, is the picture that he took. This view of the backyard facing west shows my neighbor's bischoffia tree entangled with my mango tree. The mango only had a few broken branches and was saved. A small section of the lake is visible behind several broken branches lying on the ground. During Hurricane Wilma, the waves were only one foot high. Now he's, he's making that point because this really was a very extensive storm. But Katrina, that had been uh, not as bad as this, had had six feet high waves and very rough water. I hadn't prayed over everything at that time the way I did here. And um, his testimony is that the waves should have been at least six foot high like Katrina, but they were only one foot high. Everything was contained. And my, he's showing this. Uh, this is a Bishafia tree when it's fallen on the fence. Now, I want to point out, this was my, my bedroom the master bedroom where I stayed in. My husband was on the opposite end of the house. This is another testimony. This Bishafi tree you're seeing, it's fallen down. It was a tremendous tree, 35 years old. And it was quite healthy and robust tree. It's a testimony about the force of the storm. But it's also a testimony of God's protection upon the prayers that I had said. Because technically speaking, this tree was situated over my bedroom. These branches would extend over there. Technically speaking, it, it was most likely to fall where and on top of my bedroom. Now, as you can see, I was camping out all night in the hallway in front of here. And so the Lord had me covered because if this had indeed fallen on this room, well, well, if I had been in there, it would have killed me. But I had not been in there. I had been out in the hallway. But even so, I had prayed to the Lord to protect the house entirely. So, 
as you can see, this is the amazing thing. This was a tremendous tree, and it fell in such a manner away from the house that not even one branch struck the roof, struck the house in any manner. And this was also a very interesting tree in that uh, where the tree had broken, it actually had had uh, bleeding. It had uh, it bled like like almost like a person. So, anyways, uh, this was a big job to get to, for my neighbor to get this tree out of there. But this tremendous, huge tree not only was uprooted and fell, but it fell on top of our smaller mango tree. And as my husband testified, there was hardly there was no damage. It took. It, this mango tree withstood the storm, and it was and it was a mango tree that meant something to me. Not because I didn't like mango fruit that much, but because it was a place where I would feed the little a wildlife there. And so, um, to me, it's God um, sparing the things that matter to me. And his, going on, in my husband's word, I would estimate our mango tree as being 20 years old. We probably gave away more mangoes than we ate as they weren't our favorite fruit. Vivian made a wire squirrel and blue jay feeder that extends around the base of the tree. It survived. It's just a little makeshift thing that I put there. You can kind of see the wire there. But I had it because we had dogs and in order to protect the um, squirrels and the ducks when the dogs would go out by themselves I had had to erect this because otherwise our dogs were uh, making ends of the ducks because ducks are very obstinate when it comes to feeding food they will not fly away like they should so I, I had erected this and I had a little feeder going on here and it and it is only just these poles are just the kind of little poles that you just stick into the crown with ground with your uh, hands, and they were only loosely in the ground. Once again, trees, huge, tremendous trees, snapped and broke. But things that were part of the house that were loose and should have flown stayed. These little um, it's a little wire fence. It's those little um, wire fence posts that you just push into the ground three inches. There's no cement. There's nothing. It's loose. They didn't even budge. They didn't even budge. So uh, this just amazing thing after amazing thing that in this case I can show you how uh, our house, this was before I did decrees, but I this is when I did do prayers, and I did do prayer over every window. So I'm just able to show you here by um, photographs and, and by my husband's own uh, way of telling the story, how this was a hurricane, and tremendous uh, wind forces were there that was tearing out, Big trees, snapping palms. Our neighbors suffered damage to their house. And yet all we had was the gutter just fall off two hinges, but not detach. Not even torn. Something that just, just, just happened because those were old rusted screws. Something that should have gone flying. Something that could have smashed our window. Just was, just fell down and that's it. I had been not far from that window. Our mango tree, blue jay feeder, squirrel hangout, and shade provider stands tall, ready to serve our wildlife. We often have other birds, including ducks, stop off for free meals. So here was the mango tree. This is my little makeshift fence I had put there to save the lives of the ducks and the squirrels who would be there when, because um, we had a doggy door and the dogs would come out. And I had had to do this because, like I said, uh, often I would, the dogs would go out on their own, and um, I had to uh, protect the lives of the ducks and the squirrels we were feeding because before I did that, two or three times I would have to take ducks out of the mouths of our dogs. So uh, this was something I, that I had to do in post-haste. But 
like, and I'm saying it's post haste because it was just stuck in by myself. It wasn't pounded in. It wasn't cemented in. So it was a loose structure because in, in the city where we live, the code enforcement was very strict. You had to get permits for all kinds of things, including fencings and everything else. So especially because it involved a lake, a lake view that um, the city would um, troll and and clean, and they had they owned certain parts of the embankment, and you had to uh, have some free access, and so there was a lot of policing going on. So whatever you erected as a fencing, you could put anything that wasn't permanent in any way. It had to be a temporary structure. And so I could put this as a temporary structure. And so it was completely something that should have flown off. You see, the, and the only reason this suffered, this our mango tree suffered any bit of branches, this is about it, is because a tremendous bishopia tree crashed on it. It took the hit. In a way, the Lord used it to pin the bishopia tree so it wouldn't move for the rest of the storm. It entangled it to there so that uh, that tree didn't come or harm the house. Our read privacy screen was blown away from the chain link fence. Trees went flying, things went flying, but this lightweight reed fencing didn't fly away. It had been attached only by garbage ties. I call them garbage ties, but I guess they are Ziploc ties. And uh, they weren't very hefty. And I had to do everything makeshift, again, because of code. And because I had put them there to uh, eliminate the slobber of the dog next door, who was a, a huge mastiff, when my dogs and, and him would see one another and have dog wars. You know, I don't mind when dogs have dog wars. They actually have a lot of fun. You know, for the first few minutes. However, a mastiff, um, when a mastiff is barking, it can slobber quite a lot. And my dogs, who had long coats, were getting covered with slobber. So what I did was to put the privacy fencing so that if they did see one another, they would bark without a um, saliva bath happening all over them and cause me to have to uh, clean them. So... Um, that was why that fencing was there, and the thing is, is that it should have flown away because that's hollow reed. And that it just was just uh, blown away, but left right there. That was also amazing in, in itself, that it just didn't fly away because things were flown all over the place. We had um, things that from yards away that ended up in our yard. And the, uh, everything that uh, took place here, like, for instance, like, this fell down. And I don't know if it was blown away or when the impact of the Bishafia tree happened, if it snapped off. I mean, we don't know because it's right where it was. And that may have been what happened. But anyways, it was all, all miraculous that whatever happened, happened with a purpose. And the purpose ended up without there being damage. And I could, I was able to reattach that reed fencing once finally the Bashafi tree was removed. The top bar was pushed down. The Bashafi tree lies at its end of life before being cut up and hauled away. It's only memory a barren stump. Now this is the poet in our husband, my husband, uh, because <laughs> it's making me laugh a little bit here. Our house quivered in the center of a circle of fallen trees. Well, the house didn't exactly quiver, but okay. But that's his poetic nature. Our house quivered in the center of a circle of fallen trees. The wind still roared furiously and rattled the windows. We had no shutters, as I told you. Every neighbor had boarded up their windows. Uh, I was, this is the screenshot. This is a. This picture here is the neighbor right next to us. This was after the hurricane, but over here, where I'm doing this, if, if I can even do the mouse, this part, these green, or green accordion shutter windows that they had there, they were shut at the time. But we had everything totally open. 
As I looked at the rear windows, I was surprised at the low height of the waves during Wilma. One-foot-high waves raced to the northeast. During Hurricane Katrina, six-foot-high waves out of the east crossed the narrow lake and washed ashore on our backyard. Our house was holding its own. That's a man for you. He's still, he's still, um, uh, he was writing this story. I don't know who he's writing this story for, but uh, his posterity's sake. But uh, he wasn't a man to give God credit. And that's one issue that, uh, one of the issues he had, and I tried to explain to him that what was one reason his prayers would not be answered the way my prayers were, because it's a principle. God deserves his thanks. When the Lord does something for you, you give him thanks and praise. My, ma my husband had a pragmatic scientific uh, way of thinking that he was like a typical man that he wanted to take credit. He wanted to take credit for the things that actually God had made possible. And I'm sharing this because this was the reason that he wouldn't get his prayers answered and I would get my prayers answered. And this was one, this is a perfect example. And writing this story, you don't see anywhere ex where, you know, all he, you, he see said we count our blessing. Well, that was how, the only way he would say it. Uh, so this is the deal here. So he, he called, our house was holding its own. The house wasn't holding its own. God was holding our house together. Rain seemed to smash into both the front and back of the house. Trees had toppled into our front and backyard from our neighbor's property. We counted our blessings as the intensity of the storm lessened. We felt the worst part of the storm had passed. Rain gutter was our, the only damage in that it just fell from the two hinges here. This was a little bit later he took it because you can see that the branches are turning brown. He said the yard plants and small trees closer to the house had less damage. To the right of, the, of this picture, a 50-foot tall tree blew down between our yard and the neighbor's yard. On its way to crash to the earth, it took two palms of our own with it. They are visible on the ground between our plants and another palm tree. Our century plants, croutons, and other ornamentals survived the storm. And he went on to say how it looked like a... Uh, he said the streets looked like everyone had relocated to the county dump because there were so many trees and so many garbage that refused to line both sides of the street. And it took days. Here I can see some of the my neighbor's roof, and you can see the tiles that were damaged. The tiles on my neighbor, this this neighbor's, all the neighbors had tile damage, except we did not have any damage to our old roof. Well, here you can see our roof on this one, the front view of our house, where the rain gutter was the only damage. You can see our roof had no damage whatsoever. And I want to point out, it's not because we had a shingle roof, because the neighbor on the other side of us, here in this picture, had the same kind of roof. And you can see from here, the shingles were off, and even the tar paper is all loose and is sectionated. They had to replace their roof. So every neighbor Every neighbor to our left, right, front, down the entire cul-de-sac we were on had roof damage, no matter what kind of roof they had, except for our house. And these were all people who in every way, every other way, had their houses protected properly. They had shutters and so on, but... No one could protect their roof. Of course, that is something that only God can do. And so, the fact that everybody around us, no matter the roof, had their roof damaged, but ours were entirely attacked, is yet another testimony. And he didn't get this picture here. He just took this a little bit later. But the two um, palms, uh, trees, they were like these... Uh, uh, long, tall ones towering over the our house in the front that had broken off near the street and come uh, towards the picture window here, and they had fallen just before doing that in the yard. So there was every which way our house was spared a disaster. 
God hears prayers. Now this was just, I was praying in, in uh, scriptural ignorance. And yet the Lord was listening to me then. And so, uh, later on is when the Lord led me, when I became born again, to learn about praying in decrees. Now, what's the difference? Well, to do what I did over here at my house in, in uh, Pembroke Pines, it took me a while. I went around window by window, and I wrote the name of Jesus in white ground, and I prayed over all of the windows, and it took some time. Everything I wanted, I prayed for. I prayed, I prayed over <clears throat> the fence to my neighbor's house, that um, uh, my neighbor's fence, which was a kind of a vinyl fence uh, on the uh, opposite side. I, I, I just said prayers over different parts of the house. So everything was uh, not damaged. And it, w it took me some time. But in the decree, it's about as much time as for me to fill, change the name of the template, print it out, sign it, and stick it on. And so, you know, from early on, I had known the power of prayer. 